I am here at the beautiful Big Darby River, one of the scenic rivers in Ohio. I'm going to catch some crayfish. And just a few miles south of here, there's a corporation that was abused its privilege and polluted. So you can't do anything with the stuff that you catch out of there. But this is way upstream from that. And I'm going to show you how to catch some crayfish here. And first you need to look at what equipment do I use. All right, this is all you need. Five gallon bucket, little scoop net, cast net. Oh, GoPro. Yes, dorky aqua shoes. I've tried all kinds, but 10 bucks from Walmart and they work great. And then a pair of polarized sunglasses. They need to be polarized so you can see through the water. One of the fun things I love about a scoop net or a cast net, especially the cast net, you can catch a bunch of things you normally couldn't catch. Gorgeous big crayfish just went under this rock. Um, I mean, look at that guy. He's like a lobster. Huge. Mm, Pinchers are like the size of my finger. Those would hurt. I wish I had the polarizer on the GoPro. I don't have it with me. Um, crystal clear. The water's really clear today. Makes it easy for them to me to see them, but also them to see me. So that big one was there. So that means there's going to be more. A bluegill. <laughs> Some more bluegill there swimming. Whole school of fish right there. See if we can get any in the net. They're really fast and smart. Nope, not one. That's a good crayfish right there. Another big guy. Oh, skipped around the net. Smarty. There's actually not that many crayfish out here. I thought there'd be a lot more. This spot's produced really well in the past. I'm going to switch over to the cast net. This one's small. Small cast net, easy to cast. Now, good thing I didn't do a shoulder workout today because these things wear your shoulders out. Oh, wait, I did do a shoulder workout today. So, um, throwing a cast net um, can take a little learning. I always take it, ring it around my hand, put this hand in, pull it up once, and then hold that. The further you throw it, the uh, better you need to be at, at chucking it. Um, this is a small one. Ohio only allows you to throw a seven foot diameter um, net. So these lead weights around the edge or what sink fast. This is a uh, not much lead weight. So nice lawnmower. So it does a bunch of fish there. So little creek chub or oh, that's a sucker. Little guy. There's a creek, creek chub here. I don't know why they have a tendency to get stuck in the net. Little guy there, great for fishing. That was a smallmouth bass. He avoided the net. 
I'm not good in these small species, but this guy's got a mouth on the bottom like a sucker. It's been a few years since I've been to this stretch of the Derby, but it's changed a lot. There used to be a really deep pool <laughs> right at this corner, which is gone now. Um, it's just so much water comes through, it's always changing. The pools are where you can catch some really interesting fish because you just chuck it in, let it sink to the bottom, and they're just chilling out there. The deeper parts are always going to be at a bend because that's where the water's accelerating and it chews it out for whatever reason. So there's a pool right there ahead of me. I'll try to cast from this side of the weeds and see if we can get anything. Perfect throw. Not a, nothing sitting in there. Oh, that pool's not as deep as I thought. Let's go up here. It's always gonna be deeper where the water's not running. So you can see it's pretty calm up there. I usually like throwing around structure like this underwater, but it can really jack your net up, rip it a lot. Saw some fish there, maybe they avoided it, but nah, we got a couple. Bigger chub. Big chub, man, that'd be a great fish to keep and fish with. But I'm not keeping any of this, just showing you guys what I do. More chubs, a couple good sized ones. Man, I should have been keeping these. That's okay, I don't feel like taking any home. Let's squeeze them right through the net. Go backwards and mess their gills up. I like to throw right at the seam of the rushing water and the calm water. Man, yeah, a couple, gosh, I should, I should have been keeping these. Some good ones. Great bait. Also right at the edge of weed, weed beds. Yeah, that's another great fish. <clears throat> that pool right by that log would be good to throw it in. I gotta find somewhere to set my phone and bucket. I'd have over a dozen of those by now. I haven't caught anything of any size. Biggest thing's been about three or four inches. Of course, the pools haven't been very deep. Usually you can see like shimmering as you're re retrieving the cast net. I didn't see any that time. Yeah, no fish. They'll like flip around in the net when you're dragging them in and you can tell if you have something. I'll try this one one more time. Don't see any flashes of light. Oh, on the bottom. Oh, what is this? This is a tiny smallmouth bass. Little bitty smallmouth bass. That's pretty cool.
I've been here seeing raccoons swim across, deer swim across, foxes, um, bald eagles, obviously not swimming, um, obviously, turtles, I mean there's just, I've gone frog gigging at nighttime on this river creek, it's just a great place. Well, didn't end up with very many crayfish, but uh, there weren't very many in the creek right here. Got a bunch of little fish that would have been great bait. And hopefully got to share with you some of the beauty of the big Darby. And anyway, that's it. Later.